Alrighty. Welcome everyone. It is 2023, um, although somehow it is already February and we're only starting to talk about studying now. It means that we're generally a little bit more panicky, but that's cool. Let's calm. Let's keep calm. Let's stay focused. And um, we we can absolutely make we can absolutely make a good year of this where wherever you are. So, so 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 where do I want to start? Is one of my favorite stories. And um, it's one of those success stories that we've kind of may have heard, or, but this is one of my favorite success stories. So, okay, so this dude is um, Robert Kiyosaki, and I'm fairly sure that most of you have heard of him, even if you haven't really read you, read his book. He's in the States. He's worth about a hundred, over a hundred million dollars. Most of his wealth came from um, real estate. So he bought properties and sold them for a profit, bought properties and um, rented them out, et cetera. So he made a lot of money. He made his original wealth uh, on property. His story is, is really fascinating. The way that he did this, I think is so fascinating. And it's going to set up the discussion that I want to have with us and the questions that, um, you know, that I got from you guys for the session kind of feeds into it. So, so it's not just a success story. There's, you know, there's a purpose behind it. Okay, so before he got into property or whatever, he was doing other things in his life, fine, whatever. But he decided to go to a course on real estate investment, right? So he went to like a course in the evenings or on weekends or whatever, like a seminar for a couple of weeks on how to invest in property. Um, you know, obviously, given all this information about uh, the types of things that you need to be aware of when you're making investments or you're investing in property, you're buying property to rent out or to sell. So the course itself was obviously he has a whole bunch of information. Then they went away and their homework or their project for the course was to go through a whole bunch of properties that were on the market at the moment. Take a whole bunch of properties and run through each of these criteria um, for each of the properties so that you get a feel for actually applying the stuff we've spoken about. So it was like, you know, when you're looking at a property to invest in, you need to consider whether or not, I don't, I don't even know what it was, but like a whole bunch of stuff, you know, consider when the, when the property was built or whether there's a title deed or how many bathrooms there are or like the area it's in or what, I don't know. But there was like a whole list of stuff, right? And the task, the project was that you were supposed to do this for 100 properties. That was the project of his entire class. And I think there were about 30 or 40 people in that seminar with him that took that course with him. Of the people in the class, there was only one person who actually did the project. And that was him, himself, right? So out of 40 people, only one person actually went through the task and did the work, okay? And for me, this is where it's so important because it wasn't rocket science. And I think when people look at what he's, he's done or look at what he did and go like, oh, wow, how do you make money with property? Like, how do you know what to invest in? It's like magic, you know? How would you know? Um, his answer is like, after you've gone through the evaluation process that we were given in class, after you've gone through that a hundred times, it becomes fairly obvious what you're looking at. You know, the patterns and the trends become very clear. And only after he had gone through that process and done the task, he made his first investment in property. And the first one was very successful, not out of luck, not out of magic, not out of a miracle, but because he had applied and gone through this process and had you know, had actually done the job or done this thing 100 times already. Why do I love that story? I love the story because it's very easy for us to look at goals and tasks and projects and stuff that seems insanely impossible. It seems like magic. It seems overwhelming. It seems like, well, I don't know how you're supposed to get that right. It seems like you need luck. And obviously, you know, I'm talking about him and, and his business and all of that, but obviously in the scope of, of us sitting here, we're talking about studying. And especially when you're looking at a qualification journey like this, yeah, it does feel like magic. 
how are these people passing? I've heard such horror stories about how hard it is. I've done it myself before and I can't pass. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know where you're supposed to find the time. Um, how on earth are you supposed to know what they want from you? So it can feel like you need some kind of magic, you know, to get to get through this, some kind of miracle. And that's very similar to the concept that people approach him with and go, like, how did you do it? You know, what's your big secret? Like, what's the magic tool? And his magic tool was literally like, I did what nobody else was prepared to do. And that's it. I did what nobody else was, no one else was prepared to put their, their, put their asses in the chair and do the project. It wasn't rocket science. We were given all the tools. We were given all the information. We were given all the theory. We just needed to go and sit down and do the work. And nobody did it. He was the only person who did it. And he was the only person out of all those people who went to that seminar who actually made money out of investing in property. So for me, I find that incredibly encouraging because there's a very big difference between saying to someone, your really, really big goal and your really, really big task. And the thing that you're like, wow, that's a huge goal and a huge wall to climb it's very different if I say to you, well, you know, there's a lot of luck and you might get it right or you might not get it right versus saying, actually, it's in your control. This is in your control. What's in your control? Do the work. Do the work. Okay. Are we prepared to do the work? Because that is, that's the most important thing. That's it. It's not magic. It's not a miracle. Do the work. The question, obviously, you know, in our cases, you know, when we're looking at stuff, you know, the question we need to be asking is, um, you know, when we say work, like, what is that actually? Okay, that's the question we need to be asking. Like, okay, Yvonne, you say I need to do the work. That's great. What is the work? And we're going to talk, you know, we're going to talk about that as we go through this. And the reality is very few people will do the work. And we know that everyone in the world wants a six pack, you know, wants abs of steel and wants a six pack, but very few people in the world are actually prepared to go to the gym and do the work. Everybody wants it, but are we prepared to do the work? And the work is uncomfortable. The work is not fun. The work is not like entertaining. It's horrible. It's boring. It's repetitive. It's annoying. It's uncomfortable. It makes us feel bad. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that makes this work tough. But the first thing that I really, 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 really want to reiterate and I, I want you to be aware of is success comes to those who do the work. Success comes to those who do the work. We're going to ask, what is the work that we need to be doing? But I have not yet come across a student who has done the work and not reaped the rewards. So for me, that's incredibly comforting. I don't know how you feel about that, but I love that story. I love that story because everyone's like, oh, how do you make money off of investment property? That's amazing. Like buying property, like that's magic. You must have gotten lucky. And he was like, no, I just did the work. Everybody was given the same task. Everybody was given exactly the same information. And he was the only one who did anything with it. So I don't know about you, but I find that incredibly encouraging and I love that story.